Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today, we're gonna build a lure that's a bit of a shortcut because I made a quick trip to my local discount store looking for a little bit of inspiration. And what I found were these guys. And while this is probably not the most creative lure build I've ever done, it should still have its challenges. We're gonna have to come up with a way to make this thing cast out there in some predictable way and retrieve somehow in some way that we'll wanna make a fish actually try to bite it. So if this is your first time to the channel, my name's Franco, I'm a professional engineer, a lure designer and lure builder. I'm an avid fisherman and I make these videos to add a little bit of physics and engineering to the art of lure making. And to try to answer that critical question, why does it do that? So the first thing I need to figure out is if I can get this thing to be a topwater lure because that's my intention because I intend to make it kind of like a surface wake bait and to do that I need to be certain that this thing's going to float right now the back end of this lure is very much like an ellipse so I could treat this like an ellipsoid or basically a, an elliptical solid right like a sphere that's elliptical shape and to get the volume you just multiply four thirds times the length this is the top view the height times the thickness of that body and then all that times pi. But there's an easier way. Let's just take it, pour some water in it, and we'll measure it in a measuring cup, and then we'll know exactly what the internal volume is. And that looks like it's right on 15 milliliters. And what I gotta do now is figure out how much resin to put in this thing, or how much resin to mix anyway. And since I already know that my resin mix has a density of about 0.58 grams per milliliter, I can just multiply 0.58 times the 15 milliliters. That's the internal volume of that spider body. So I get 8.7 grams. That's how much resin mix I need. So I can mix four grams of part A, four grams of part B, it gives me eight. And then I can put in 0.8 grams of the micro balloon fillers. And that gives me my exact 10% mix that I like to use and 8.8, .8, which is right on the money. So let's do it that way. But first, mixing a tiny bit to fill the cavity in the front of the body. And we'll just let that set before we move on. This little plug is set up and I've masked the body off and taped it to the vise so I don't have to squeeze it. I should be able to lift this up and just pour in. And my intention is to leave this head section kind of cocked upwards or backwards right now. So when I pull it through the water, it'll tend to kind of hop or at least stay on the surface. I gotta say, it looks kind of creepy in there. All right, so let's go ahead and mix the resin. I want four grams. I overdid it a little bit, but that's all right. I'll match it with the other one. 0.8 grams of the micro balloons. 0.83 will work. Four grams of the other part. Now I keep the bottles of resin in the refrigerator and that slows down the reaction a little bit, but it still moves pretty quick. So. We'll set this thing up here and hopefully it'll expand up and cover everything. Let's see what this thing looks like now. Rock solid. The head is tilted up, kind of like I want it. So the next step is to decide how to modify this thing 
to get it to become a lure. Now obviously I'm gonna put hooks on it. I'm gonna put a hook here and a hook up here. I'm gonna tie on somewhere in here, but I'm still trying to decide <clears throat> whether to put a blade in this thing to, to make it wanna wobble or whether it'll behave well enough without anything. But either way, I'm gonna go ahead and put some preliminary little hook hangers and a place to tie on to and I'll take it down to the lake and just let's see what it does just like this. Let's put some hooks on and go down to the lake. All right, I apologize for the background noise. My neighbors are mowing. Well, that's something, it actually sinks. Well, just for jollies, let's see what it does when you cast it. <laughs> it's a spider bomb. Now check that out. It actually will run on the surface. I thought it was going to run upside down, but check that out. I can actually make it hop. Oh man, this thing would have been great if it floated, but I can't believe it cast and doesn't like tangle on its own legs or anything. I can actually get it to skip back. Well, it's not an absolute complete disaster. It's pretty much an 80% disaster though. Look at that, it actually will rotate and come to the surface. You know, this is fishable. I'm just too picky. Certainly can't be used as a subsurface lure. That ended up being a bit of a waste of time, I guess. I thought it was gonna end up looking pretty cool and being a nice little top water lure, but no go. So this one's for you guys who always say, leave all the mistakes and all the failures in, we all learn from it. So we're gonna try to salvage this video and use it to go ahead and announce the winner of the Guess the Weight of the Fish and Lure giveaway. But we'll do that after I explain to you why this thing didn't work. So even though it didn't float, I did try to see what it would do if I just kind of pulled it along mid water and see if maybe I could salvage the lure by putting a lip on it and making a swim bait of some kind. But there's no way, this thing is too weirdly shaped. There's too much of an asymmetry in the legs and everything. It would never pull straight. It would want to either rotate or spiral or something. But here's why I made that mistake. Remember I did that volume check with the uh, fluid in the body and it came out to 15 milliliters. So that means there was at least 15 grams of buoyancy in this body. If you weigh the body, and this is another one just like it, you can see it weighs 22.14 grams. So I would need at least 22 milliliters of volume out of this body and no other weight for this thing just to float. So that was not gonna happen. I should have known better. I guess what I was thinking is that this plastic would not be so dense and want to sink so quickly. What I should have done was to clip a piece off and throw it in the water tank because at that point I would have known pretty quickly that this thing was never going to float. So let's go ahead and declare a winner of the contest. First, here's the actual weight. Two pounds, 1.87 ounces. And the person who came the closest is Joe Frome. His guess was two pounds, 1.61 ounces. That's pretty doggone close. So Joe, you get to select from one of these three lures, either the surface glide bait, the classic crankbait, or the classic data. I think that's how you pronounce it. And you can just send me your contact information and your selection and the mailing address where you want this thing sent in an email to engineeredangler at gmail.com. And I'll have a link to that email in the description. Well, I won't have anything to put in the center place of honor on my lure wall for the next video, but you can't get them all right. All right, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all next Friday.